our planet is going to face its biggest challenge yet in 2024. A strange weather phenomenon is emerging from the heart of the Pacific Ocean and it's going to affect us all. This unwelcome guest disrupts our seasons, messes up our weather, and impacts our lives in devastating ways, and it's called El Nino, which is often used in reference to Jesus Christ. But how did it get this name? And how devastating are its effects really? Join us as we take a look at the inner workings of this weather phenomenon. We'll explore how El Nino can disrupt whole ecosystems and if early predictions will be enough to minimize the damage it can cause. El Nino's Destructive History El Nino has a big impact on our global weather. It can cause serious storms in some places and droughts in others. The warming it brings can also mess with ocean life and bird populations, which in turn affect the fishing industry. And here's the thing, El Nino isn't new. We last saw it in 2016, and it caused all sorts of crazy weather around the world. There were serious droughts in Africa that led to food shortages, and South America experienced terrible floods due to heavy rains. This showed us just how much El Nino can mess with our planet's climate and our lives. Right now in 2023, it's one of the hottest years we've had in a while, and it looks like 2024 is going to be even hotter, all thanks to El Nino. One of the most famous instances happened between 1789 and 1793, known as the Great El Nino. This event caused some very unusual global weather patterns and had a big impact on people. It brought heavy rain and floods to India, which contributed to a cholera epidemic that eventually spread worldwide. Similar events occurred in Peru and Ecuador. The heavy rains and flooding were very tough on the people, leading to a loss of life and property during the 20th century. The El Nino event in 1982 to 1983 was one of the most powerful of the century and caused serious disasters related to climate all around the world. It brought intense storms to the western coast of South America, severe drought in the Western Pacific, and devastating wildfires in Australia. Similarly, the El Nino event in 1997-98 was also very destructive. It caused major flooding and landslides in California, fires in Indonesia, and bad weather in many parts of the world during El Nino years. Warmer and more humid conditions during El Nino can increase mosquito-borne diseases like malaria and dengue in places such as South Asia and South America. The farming sector also takes a hit, as El Nino-related droughts can lead to crop failures, food shortages, and even famine in the worst cases. The Science Behind El Nino To get a handle on El Nino, it helps first to get a grasp of what the Pacific Ocean usually does, being the biggest ocean on our planet. Asia and Australia border it on the west, and North and South America surround it on the east. Under normal conditions, warm water cruises along the coast of Peru in South America, and it's the Pacific trade winds that push it there. These winds blow from east to west, steering this warm water towards Australia and coastal areas of Asia. As this warm water reaches these spots, temperatures rise. Now, let's talk about the science bit. The relationship between temperature and atmospheric pressure is vital here. High-pressure areas usually correspond to lower temperatures, while low-pressure zones usually mean higher temperatures. So, when the warm water leaves Peru, cold water rises to the surface near the Peruvian coast. This whole process is called upwelling. This cold water coming up is rich in nutrients, which makes it a magnet for lots of fish. That's excellent news for fishermen in Peru, Chile, and Ecuador. The Humboldt Current is a significant player in this process. It's like a conveyor belt of cold water that runs along the coasts of Peru and Chile. This current brings cold ocean water up to the surface. When this cold water reaches Peru's coastline, it cools down, creating a high-pressure zone. The winds then carry a ton of moisture thanks to the evaporation happening in this high-pressure area over the Pacific, and it heads to the low-pressure areas over Asia and Australia. When these moisture-laden winds reach those places, they bring rain. But during an El Nino event, this whole cycle goes haywire. The trade winds that normally go from Peru to Australia and Asia become weaker because of changes in pressure. 
This means the warm water transfer gets interrupted. As a result, the temperatures along the Peruvian coast shoot up, creating a low-pressure area there. On the flip side, since the warm water isn't making it to Australia and Asia, temperatures drop in those areas and you get high-pressure zones. So, during El Niño, the whole system flips around. The winds, which typically travel from Peru to Australia and Asia, now make a switch and blow the other way, from Australia to Peru. These winds are full of moisture, and when they hit the coasts of North and South America, they bring a ton of rain. This excess rain leads to floods, landslides, and soil erosion in places like Peru and Chile. But there's more to it. During El Niño, the sea surface temperature rises, and this affects marine life. The warmer water doesn't have as many nutrients as the cold water, and this impacts the growth of phytoplankton, which are the foundation of the ocean's food chain, and fish populations can take a serious hit. It also affects birds and other creatures that depend on those fish for their meals, as well as the communities that rely on fishing for their livelihoods. Meanwhile, in Asia and Australia, you've got drought conditions because there's less humidity. The Effects of El Niño This whole cycle, along with its flip side called La Niña, is known as the El Niño Southern Oscillation. It's a complex interplay between the ocean and the atmosphere, and it has a big impact on global climate patterns. It doesn't just mess with rainfall, it also influences natural disasters, agriculture, and the economies of the areas it affects. El Niño events also add to the overall rise in global temperatures. The Pacific Ocean releasing loads of heat into the atmosphere during El Niño years can make those some of the hottest on record. Additionally, El Niño has serious health implications because when it strikes, it often brings warmer and more humid conditions that can create a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. This can lead to the increased transmission of diseases like malaria and dengue. Similarly, El Niño can also bring drought conditions. In the Pacific, for instance, it brought one of the most severe droughts in decades, affecting countries like Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, and the Solomon Islands. This led to critical food and water shortages in Africa, with Ethiopia experiencing its worst drought in 50 years, leaving millions in need of food aid. Other African countries, including South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Malawi, also struggled with food and water shortages due to the drought. Some regions of East Africa, like Kenya and Somalia, experienced increased rainfall, leading to flooding. Meanwhile, Asian countries such as Vietnam, the Philippines, and Thailand faced severe drought conditions that significantly affected their agricultural production. In South America, some areas saw increased rainfall, resulting in devastating flooding. For instance, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Brazil experienced widespread flooding that displaced over 150,000 people. The 2015 to 2016 El Nino event played a role in making 2016 the hottest year ever recorded at that time and worsened the ongoing global coral bleaching crisis, causing substantial damage to coral reefs worldwide, including the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Why predictions are necessary? During El Niño events, agriculture and the livelihoods of people are significantly impacted. This highlights the need to improve our ability to predict and prepare for these events, particularly in regions most vulnerable to their effects. Predicting and monitoring El Niño events, which have a major influence on global climate, is quite a complex process, and it relies on precise data collection and advanced analysis techniques. To get the job done, scientists have some key tools in their arsenal, like satellites, ocean buoys, and sophisticated data models. Satellites, for instance, are like our eyes in the sky, orbiting the Earth and gathering all sorts of data about our oceans. They keep tabs on things like sea surface temperatures, wind patterns, and rainfall. By looking at this data, scientists can spot early signs of an impending El Niño event. For instance, if they see sea surface temperatures rising in the eastern Pacific, that's a hint that El Niño might be on its way. Satellites can also provide a way to continuously watch how an El Niño event unfolds, giving us a global view that we couldn't get otherwise. Another important piece of the puzzle is a network of floating buoys known as the Tropical Atmosphere Ocean Array, or Tower Array. These buoys, about 70 of them, are spread out across the Pacific Ocean. 
They gather real-time data on the temperature, wind speed, wind direction and humidity at different depths in the ocean. When you combine this buoy data with what the satellites are seeing, you get a super detailed view of what's happening in the Pacific. This helps scientists detect an El Niño event well before it really gets going. For example, one of the first signs that an El Niño might be on the way is a thing called a Kelvin wave, which is basically a big mass of warm water moving beneath the ocean's surface. The Tau Buoy Array can spot these waves, giving scientists an early heads up about El Niño. But just collecting data isn't enough. That's where data modeling comes into play. Scientists use complex computer models to crunch all this data and make accurate predictions about El Niño events. These models help us understand the complex processes involved and prepare for the impact El Niño can have on our world. These models, often referred to as general circulation models, rely on equations grounded in the fundamental laws of physics to simulate this dynamic system. To feed these models, scientists input data from satellites and buoys that provide important information about climate patterns and variations. These initial conditions then form the basis for the models to predict how these conditions might evolve over time. By running these models and comparing their outcomes with historical El Niño events, scientists can provide forecasts about when and how an El Niño event might occur. While scientists can often predict the occurrence of an El Niño event several months in advance, Forecasting the exact extent of the resulting climate changes is still challenging. But despite these challenges, scientists from around the world, coupled with ongoing technological advancements, are hard at work to enhance our understanding of and ability to predict El Niño events. Scientists are tapping into the capabilities of satellites, buoys and data models to predict when the next El Niño event will happen. But the question is, Will early predictions be early enough to prepare for the worst? Although pinpointing the exact timing and intensity of these events is complex, could the ongoing advancements in technology help? Let us know in the comments below and leave a like for more.